I grew up, like many of you guys, playing absolute classics like Mario 64, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, Donkey Kong 64. So, my first introduction to games was via a third-person perspective, and even before it was perfected. As games progressed, we kind of started to see a little bit of a shift towards more first-person games, and specifically first-person shooters. And from that, we have first-person fantasy games, RPG, etc. If I look at an honest look at my gaming history, I see a pattern where I'll only play a first-person game if it's a big name like Skyrim, for instance. That was one of the big name first-person games that I played. And even still, I think it was a terrible idea to have it first-person. Let's look at Elder Scrolls Online, okay? Same engine, same thing. If you look at any of the people who play it, all of them play third-person perspective. Even though third-person perspective, the movement is janky, it looks goofy, but third-person perspective, when given the option of first-person or third-person, third-person is always superior. It's so superior, in fact, that I present the argument that there should be no first-person games, no matter what. So starting off first, I just want to point out something quick, because I really thought about the first-person games that were tolerable, or one that I could play. Instantly, uh, Chronicles of Riddick Escape from Butcher Bay came to mind and I had to replay it to truly understand why I didn't mind it being first person and I figured out the reason now it's subtle but as you can see as if you really look the default in this game is a first person convex view now why is this important because a convex view is the view that is most like how we actually v visualize things in reality. As you can see from the diagram above, both eyes can see from 220, 200 degrees to 220 degrees. So you can actually see if you were to cut your reality into a square, you could actually see the one half of the square in front of you and slightly behind you a bit. Saying that, zero degrees is usually used for console games as the screen, and for PCs, it tends to be 90 to 100 degrees. Now, with that, is where we can immediately and obviously see the problem here. On the left is typically what we see in a video game. 90 degrees of viewable. Now, if we look again on the right, this is what we can see in real life. So, it becomes extremely apparent that we're losing at least a hundred degrees just on the horizontal field of what we can see now think about a game like cod or any first person shooter that extra hundred degrees if it were like real life would be in a massive advantage so just to reiterate from the horizontal field meaning left to right is about 200 to 220 degrees. Now, looking up and down is 100 degrees in real life. That's our uh, view, field of view. Now, that's all well and good, but that still doesn't even account for the fact that our necks can rotate and our eyes can move. A quick definition. A saccade is a rapid conjugate eye movement that shifts the center of gaze from one part of the visual field to another. Basically, this just means that your eye can move. Now, the largest saccades, excluding contributions ahead movement for humans, can be up to 100 degrees, with a duration of 300 milliseconds and a maximum velocity of about 500 to 700 degrees per second thinking about this plausibly in a video game then we only have one c stick and that controls a stagnant field of view that doesn't that's under the assumption we're not moving our eyes we're only moving our head now this adds 
a degree of complexity that you probably couldn't even put on a controller. So they really did the best that they could. Then we can get into the topic of stick sensitivity. And what do I mean by that? In each game, typically, that's first person. You have a, a vertical sensitivity and a horizontal sensitivity. Now, there's two sensitivities in true life one sensitivity for how fast your head can move and one sensitivity for how fast your eyes can move and a game simply cannot mimic the snap action of your eyes at 0.3 milliseconds for every 100 degrees and remember you can also move your eyes and your neck all at the same time meaning that if you were to replicate this on a controller you'd be using two sticks just basically for the complex movement of your eyes and your head now we have two options at this point do we try to perfect first person well first and foremost typically as i said earlier first person we're already losing 100 degrees typically for a game. Now, there are actual games that allow you to change your field of view, Minecraft being one of them, but it's few and far between if you really look into it. Now, but that still doesn't account for the head movement, like I said, and the eye movement. So, what do we do? Well, so far, our technology has not been able to uh, replicate human vision in the first person the only thing that comes close as a video game wise would be virtual reality but in virtual reality you're actually still using your physical body in the real world and it's not being em emulated via a video game so in person you're actually using your head and your eyes to look around as opposed to a typical video game where you would use the c stick or multiple sticks to control like i said your head your eyes etc and having a better field of view so perfecting the f true in life reality of first person is extremely hard to conceptualize because it hasn't been done yet so if any of you guys want to figure that out, that'd be amazing. So then we go to number two, the obvious, the true and proven best way to enjoy any video game. That is the third person. Now, some of you might be going crazy at this point because we already know what the first thing that you think of when I say third person's the best. Well, but about shooter games, there's a clear advantage given to somebody playing a shooter game in the third person because you can actually see around corners, for instance, without actually having to put yourself in harm's way as you would in real life. Now, my answer to that is... First-person shooter games shouldn't even be games, first of all. Throw them to VR, okay? I'm not. We're not going to change the whole video game world because majority of people play COD. If you play COD, you don't even play video games, okay? Number two, every game other than that should be third-person. A perfect example for me is Cyberpunk. Here we have Cyberpunk, which is a story-driven game that is touted to have this crazy aesthetic, you know, all this stuff going on, blah, 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 but then it's first person. I don't know about you guys, guys, but when I play a game, I like to, and then that has equipment, for instance, I like to be able to see my character. It's super pointless to me to have to go into a menu to, uh look at my character you know what i mean an easy compromise would be this every game should be like rockstar's latest games red dead redemption 2 gta we have an option for first person and third person locking and you know the thing is this is because i read reviews i see this i see that me in particular i know there are many other people like me if a game is locked, like Cyberpunk, locked to first person, I just won't even play it. You alienate a whole group of video gamers because you want to keep one 
inferior like i said earlier inferior first person view so this is just some food for thoughts so all you guys who love first person whatever realize you're not even getting half of the true experience in reality of what things would be now let's go further into why first person is bad okay first person is bad because in real life we also use our sense of sound to get a 360 degree view of our environment now the last cod what was the biggest complaint from the top streamers the audio couldn't hear behind you couldn't hear this people sprinting da 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 da, da. if you are a first person game and a first person shooting game specifically your audio has to be perfect it has to be crisp you and saying that too when you're playing a game like this if you're playing on consoles forget it you need to have headphones your tv doesn't have the capability to have surround sound unless you have a surround sound speaker set up so once again a huge disadvantage for those who aren't using a headset you're not getting the true 360 degrees audio that some people are getting. And then we have the discrepancy that there are there's a huge variety of headphones and some are complete garbage and some are great. So that further exasperates the disparity between gamers. It's ba so basically by putting a game first person you're alienating people who only have a console and a TV, and that's it. So, it's it's the wrong way to play games, okay? It's the inferior way to play games and enjoy games. So, demand your video game developer, publisher, have first person and third person. So party people, let me know what you think. Let me know if I made a valid argument, if you agree, if you disagree. Um, if you agree, send it to all your boys who love COD and only play COD. I love to hear what you guys think. I always appreciate the support, everyone. Thank you.